Ladies and gentlemen, people have done every high round in a game. People have done every egg under 24 hours. But no one's ever done it by themselves. Or at least I think so. So, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to do what no man's even dared to do, and that's to complete every easter egg in under 12 hours. That's right, I gave myself 12 hours to complete every easter egg from Duris' flytrap to the story's climax at Revelations. The reason I didn't include BO4 or Cold War was because I'd end up doing what low tier god Osoevers famously said. Your life is nothing! You serve zero purpose! You should- My What the hell wrong with you? Hey, Duris, the giant, the birthplace of zombies as we know today, introducing items such as the Pack-a-Punch and little easter eggs which would later become a staple of the series. So I thought why not bring homage to this great map by at least completing it. This map is ruthless. I've reset countless times dying to these stupid dogs. Oh, oh, I died! But once I've got past them, I was able to hit the button and three teddy bears in order to achieve my goal of beating this map in under 10 minutes. That would be the case if it wasn't for- Ascension, the first DLC of the first Black Ops game, also known as the first strike, is a personal favorite of mine. <laughs> that was until I decided to speedrun the map. To finish this map, you need the Gersh, Ray Gun, and the Thunder Gun. The amount of resets I had to do on this map was abysmal. Not only did I have to redo the map, but I also had to redo Dog Reese. What the f- Beating this map under 30 minutes was my goal. 30 minutes. You'd think that'd be reasonable for a map's egg as short as Ascension. But Ascension didn't think so. No, no, I, don't I, like don't like I don't like this, I don't like any of this. It was on this fateful game where I finally got the Gersh 16 minutes later. Unfortunately, my mic and audio for the game was muted, so at least to the point that somehow this Gersh throw failed. Tell me honestly how this even failed. I threw a second one and teleported the generator, activated the lander, turned on the computer and finished the button step. When I did all the landers, I activated the rocket and blew it up to get inside the place faster. And, <laughs> well, come on, it's classic. Then I got stuck like this. <laughs> oh, you've got to be. You have to stand on the circle pedestal for two whole minutes, and then the clock disappears. I then had to get enough points to pack punch both the ray gun and the thunder gun to actually finish the final step. But as it turns out, I might have used all my gershes. I had to wait for a max ammo to, you know, I could finally finish the egg in 31 minutes. About a minute over my initial goal, but at this point, I just wanted to get past this map. Call of the Dead. I wasn't too bothered going slightly over the limit because I knew I'd save time with the 30 minute goal I'd given myself to beat this map. Call of the Dead only had 3 steps on solo, so I breezed through them and the only real obstacle I had was getting the VR11. However, I managed to get it within my third hit of the box. Let's go! Oh, let's go. As lucky as I'd gotten, I actually forgot that you didn't need to do the radio step on solos, so I ended up taking a stupid down. Are you serious? I then grabbed Quick Arrive to not only play it safe, but also finish the last step easily like this. With all that, I finished in around 15 minutes, half the time of my original goal for this map. Which brings us to Shangri-La. I love that, I appreciate that. Going into the map, my goal was to check early on which gongs were safe for later on. I then prayed that with all the points I'd gotten from spawn that I'd get the one thing needed to complete this egg. The baby gun. Um, well actually, it's the 3179JG. I got it on my third hit. Incredible luck. And because we're on the solo mod, the first step looks something like this. <laughs> You know, up like this, I think these zombies are pretty cute. I didn't notice until after, but the fire zombie was sprinting behind these two zombies. So when I killed the other two, it just blew up. I shrunk the ball, hit some gongs, died, dragged the fire guy, and plunged some holes. I then hit a radio that's not included in anyone's guide for this map. Not even a no-nonsense guide. Not even a codename pizza video. After spinning the wheels, I hit the gongs, shot the balls, and started clipping through this wall. 
I gave the dude the dynamite and I grabbed the stone once it turned daytime. And so, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We're on to moon. Oh, you're awake. Well, your teeth are finished and um, your oh, gums should be oh, here by the end of the Where's week. my dick at? Where? Ha! Moon. Because this is Moon Solo, B1 edition, I only needed the excavator pie and the wave guns, or the zap guns, to complete the app. I got the wave gun first hit. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't until round 13 where I got excavator pie. I did Samantha says, did the hacker step, walk the ball, and fill the souls up fairly easily. I mean, come on. I, I, I had jug, speed, double tap, and quick arrive, so uh, <laughs> I kind of felt like a super soldier here. Yeah. I mean, I did forget to hit the buttons, but that only costed a couple of seconds. I beat this really easy egg in 21 minutes or so. While this map did have one of the best, if not the best ending for zombies, it did end up leading into one of the worst experiences in zombies history. And that's... Transit. This map suffered from what BO4 did, over ambition. I tried to do way too much for the hardware at the time and man did it backfire hard. Not as much as it did for BO4, but it was still pretty bad. Ironically enough, it was here on BO2 where I started to zoom. I wanted to do the Richthofen side first. First? <laughs> well, we'll get to that later. This egg is really simple. All I needed to do was build the jet gun, get the EMPs, get explosive kills and throw it said EMPs. That's it. Now granted the EMPs weren't so easy to get. Man. Thankfully though I managed to get it within the second box location which just so happened to be in the town which houses stamina. Up. Also this is pretty much how transit plays out. I used the jet gun, got my 25 kills, and then jumped through the teleporter to EMP two different lamps. Finishing in 18 minutes and 24 seconds. Here's some behind the scenes footage of uh, how transit looks like without the fog. Pretty neat, isn't it? Now on to... I've just woke up in a fucking steaming mood, yeah? Because I live in a shithole! I hate the fucking place! I fucking hate it! It's full of dickheads! I fucking hate it! Die Rise. Now, I personally think this map is really misunderstood. As someone who actually took the time to learn the map, I realized that the map isn't that bad. Like, come on, guys. I, it, it really isn't that bad. I immediately build the trample steam as soon as possible to simply get it out of the way. And I grab Quick Revive on the way as a safety measure. You see, you're able to drop down to the trample steam build without dying by simply being built differently. I then jump down to these pink mattresses and then try to grab onto one of the ledges. I bounce off and miss. I then build the liquefier as soon as possible. I step on the elevator to finish step 1 and then try to go to one of the symbols outside hoping it'd be the one. Unfortunately, it wasn't, so I grabbed the liquefier and went up to the roof. I prayed that it was the symbol on the roof, however it wasn't that one either. I luckily got on this elevator so patiently waiting for me to hopefully get the spawn symbols. However, I'm pretty unlucky so I had to go all the way to the sushi room to finish step 2. I bought the SVU to snipe the balls off the dragon's mouth and then shot said balls with the slick fire, lubing them up with 20 shots each. I then trekked to buy the galvan knuckles for the final step and then jump off to teleport back to spawn using quick revive. I then placed my trample steam on the near symbol to then get my flings out of the way. I listened to the little rocket sounds to see if I placed it right and to see if I finished the step. The final step is where a lot of people get stuck and honestly I don't know why it, it's, it's very simple. All you need to do is correlate each symbol color to each number color. E screen plus green 2 equals the east side being the second one to hit. And the symbols aren't that difficult to learn either. The E on the bottom of this symbol is East, the long line on top of this symbol is West, and well, the one that looks like N is North. So with the process of elimination, South would be the last one. But if you want to know, it has a little tough, so yeah. My code happened to be South, East, North, West, and I finished in 12 minutes and 33 seconds. Chucky Poo, join Joe Metro, please. You look lonely. Buried Richthofen. 
This is arguably the worst egg on the Richthofen side, and that's due to the lever step. We'll get to that in a bit, but we start buried off by getting the time bomb on the first hit of the box. And the paralyzer in the fourth hit. I then hit free Leroy and start to build a guillotine. I open up the church to get Voltrade, and then I start to shoot the crystal balls. When I get back, I nade the lantern and start the witch kills needed to fill up the lantern for the next step. Uh, you see, the witches here do get a bit quirky. I then try to decipher this, but end up getting it wrong the first time. So I ended up wasting a bit of time. You can hit them in any order, however if it's G last, then it should be the fastest one to the guillotine. Now when you go back in time, there's a pretty big chance that the fourth body is just non-existent. So that's why sometimes it's a trial and error endeavor. But there's a patch that fixes the body glitch. Thankfully, I managed to get the lever on the second body I found. Now for the last step that practically ruins this otherwise fun egg for me, the lever step. You flick levers, and if they give a small spark, then it's in that right order. You hit the blue last, so it's last. In solo, there's a chance of the completion sound not even playing when you finish. So you're infinitely pulling the levers because I was in VC with my friends at the time. So I asked one of them what the code could possibly be. Rage. Huh? Give me a code, give me a code. <laughs> Oh, the levers? Um, Chuck, I have no clue. My brain is fried. Like, I'm trying to, like, run, and then also, like, um, blue, red, green, yellow. There we go. Okay. Figured out what colors were which. Keep in mind, I was prepared to spend a whole hour on this map because of this step. So, I was getting desperate. Yeah, That'd be nice. Sure. Thank you, Rage. You gave it to me first try. Wow. Ain't no way. <laughs> that is wow. wild. Rage yeah, I'm a aimbot. I'm a professional. Let's go. <laughs> He's an aimbot. That, is, that is wild. This dude gave me the exact code needed to finish this step. That's literally a 1 in 24 chance. One sharpshooter left, and boom. Richthofen's super so egg close, is so done. Bimbo. Watch your calories. Don't you tell me how many calories I need, bimbo! Durries. To have a little buffer of sorts, I added in B1 Durries. Because I didn't want to go from buried to transit. I don't know, that just seemed a little depressing to me. The Black Ops 2 Victus maps, Transit, Diarise, and Buried, I both have two easter eggs within them. The Richthofen side and the Maxis side. Both of them will lead to a super easter egg ending. And within this video, I did both. This egg was pretty much the same. I just played it safer and thank god because I died. Then I played it off with the monkeys. Anyways. Transit. Now, instead of turning on the power, I still turn it on, but then I have to turn it off right after. I then have to spawn the Avogadro in by making sure the storm is over the cornfield when I end round 2. After that, I drag the stinky Avogadro directly under the pylon, and right before I EMP this dude, I have to make sure the turbine is under it as well. That way is enough power to- <laughs> Essentially, it's trying to get off that T-Mobile Wi-Fi. Finally, I just place my turbine under this lamppost and boom. I'm done with the Maxis Transit Easter egg. <laughs> no no Dragon no Balls. Nuggets. Too, Too old, old to order off the, the kids, kids menu. menu. So, in the beginning, I do this. Can you do like a hand claw with your hand and do grrr, like an alpha? Because you look like an alpha male. <laughs> oh my god! Then, the first two steps are the same. So after my friend showed me the story of Undertale, I, <laughs> I then jump off and teleport to spawn. Now after that, I gotta get kills in the boot room. But before that, I have to get the ballistic knife. Why? I don't know. Ask Shrek why they made Outbreak DLC 2 for Cold War. For some reason, after you get kills in the booter room, you need to shoot this room with a ballistic knife specifically. So I shot it from up here, but I didn't have enough points, so I jumped off. I went to the bank and cycled over. Now this step, I just hate because it's so buggy. I essentially grab the ball, place it on the trample scene, place it back where I got it from, and then I cycle between the two statues. So yeah, it's kind of clear to see which version of the egg is better. Again, like Die Rise, the first two steps are pretty much the same. Well, the only starting. person that's getting scanned is my mom if it doesn't work, so. <laughs> I honestly hope it doesn't work. That's crazy. And, but what if it does, bro? What if it does? But instead of a guillotine, 
I build a noose. Yes, I know. Very innovative. But instead of witch kills, I fucking have Leroy run over the zombies. But the last zombie just would not spawn in, so I literally sat here for three whole minutes just waiting for the round to end. You don't need Voltrade for the side of the egg, so I don't even bother turning on the power. That's why Jug is kinda just dying in the back. The best sign to leave last is B. Also, to make this step easier, you just place the time bomb before you start knifing the signs. Because you're gonna have to do this step twice. Oh my god, this always happens. Wow, if I had a nickel for every time I had to do the same step, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird to happen twice. The final step is a leisure ball step, which thank god the Maxis side isn't booty butt like the Rixhoffen counterpart. One sharpshooter later, then boom. Or W Booker. I mean, yo, uh, fire! <laughs> Goats! What do you say, bro? Like, yo, this is peak! The medic doesn't know how to use the vaccinator! It's so awesome! The prison that's not blood of the dead. Now, when you think about this map, trust me, I know what you're thinking. What full house in the nether? I'd start off by backing it up and opening the door while in afterlife mode. This can be done by spamming the interact button and making sure the game is on 90 FPS for optimal settings. I chalked the key through this wall, and then I chalked the double points open for this later. Oh, and the door for downstairs. I'd start up the laundry and then attempt to get points. Attempt. But I ended up getting a nuke, forcing me to progress faster than I'd like to. I'd grab the plane piece at the spiral staircase, and then I'd chalk everything electrical at the docks. I'd finish the dog, but not before leaving, I'd grab the plane piece down here. I'd then chalk the warden's office open, and grab the plane piece in there. However, I didn't have points, so I had to pull out my inner Activision like, We've, we've got, got to have, have money. money. Luckily, I managed to get a double points from a random zombie. So I ended the round here to make sure the flow of the speedrun isn't interrupted. I finished the dog in the infirmary and grabbed the final plating piece before launching off the roof. As I waited for the electric chairs to spawn in, I wanted to time the round end right before I left. That way the gas cans to ride the plane again are spawned in when I ended the round. I chose the second chair because it has the closest revive spawn. Once I get up, I run to the warden's office to get that gas can, and then I start to fill up the second dog. I got a nuke, which is kinda annoying but isn't too bad, as it just extends the speedrun. I take the gondola down to the docks and grab that gas can, get the gas can on the spiral staircase, and run up to the hell's retriever. And watch that grab the skull from out of nowhere. Now watch me do it again. I do the same thing last time I was here, and go down this route to get the gas cans to fly one last time. There's this really cool trick I could do which could save me a bit of time. All I had to do was throw my tomahawk from very far. I missed. Well, since I failed that, I just grabbed the skull in the move. Now I just gotta shock the spoon. I grab the final skull and trade out my pistol for the blender gat. And as I run to the roof to ride the plane one last time, I tomahawk the left side of the mattress that's on the ground to summon the puppets. When I get back, I run down to the spiral staircase to input the codes. 101, 481, 386, 872, and f How do I know the codes? I don't know, apparently it's hidden in plain sight or something like that. Once I grab the headphones, boom, the egg is done. You're, you have to be mentally prepared to play this game, y'all, because the psychology the game just mixes up your, because it, it tricks your brain with the numbers and timing and colors, y'all. You have to be an advanced, mature brain to play this game. So I recommend you get a NAT scan before you play this game, y'all. So I start off the egg by doing gens 1, 2, and 3. Unfortunately, I didn't get the spawn robot for the wind piece, so I would have to wait for it later. I did, however, get the stone tablet for the thunder fist, and got the ice disc, and spawn ice piece. Don't mind that I forgot to unpause my timer, I was stupid. I then continued to finish all the chests. As I did, I managed to get every wind staff piece, get every ice staff piece, get every fire staff piece, and turn on every generator. I kinda zoomed. After getting my ice crystal, I got the first lightning piece. The lame way. I then decided to finish off the stone tablet to get my G-strikes. After that, I got the rest of the lightning pieces. The lame way. I've been building and upgrading these stats for years, so at certain points during this run, I kinda got bored. Oh, oh she, she mommy, mommy, when, when, why, why did, did you, you have, have to go? To go? 
You were low. After finishing the staffs, I want to do the best thing about this entire speedrun. The fire staff glitch. Yeah, Air Force. Air Force, I'm going. Actually, no, you should, man. My aunt was in the Air Force. Oh, really? Your aunt? She died in 2015. She died at 2015. <laughs> if this glitch didn't exist, then the speedrun would be so chalked. Luckily, I didn't have to wait that long for the middle robot to come over. That way, I could rain fire on this cracked floor outside the map. I'm not gonna lie, I watched a speedrunner do this before this step, so I was just praying that this would actually work. Luckily, it actually worked, and I was able to progress through the egg. Unfortunately, I didn't get a zombie blood through the panzers, so I had to use the ice staff to get the free one. Once I shot the plane down and killed the zombie, I grabbed the Maxis drone and made my way down to the staff pedestals. I punched the zombies, got my fists upgraded, and once I placed my ice staff in the crazy place, I spent 3 rounds down here before I finished the egg. In 58 minutes! While I did give myself a goal of under an hour, I didn't think it'd actually take me about an hour. <laughs> Quite arguably, the best starting- No, it is the best starting map in all of Zombies history. Everything from the aesthetic to the gameplay builds you up to be a better player than you were before. While its easter egg is quite simple, it's still worth it for what you get during the egg and the cutscene reward. Ironically enough, this is one of the harder eggs to speedrun. Not in terms of actual difficulty, but in terms of actually getting a really good time. Now, I decided to use Megas because... <laughs> what do you think I am, stupid? I shock this, this, hit this, shock this, Look up for the symbol, smack the box, and shock this. It's gonna be things like that throughout the entire egg. Now unfortunately, I got ABH from my first gum, so I had to end the round to progress. Now because I'm bad, I had to use this beast pedestal to get the symbol here. I go back to spawn to start the first ritual and I end the round here with the raindrops I got. Why didn't I just grapple onto here? I don't know, I'm not gonna lie, I forgot. I go into beast mode to get the final symbol for the sword and to open this door. I immediately put in the symbols and place the egg. Not before placing my egg, I look at this pile of rubble to get the good spawns. Now, I completely blanked out here and got the nuke, prolonging the time I needed to be here. A rough start, yes, however things would soon go my way. WRONG! I got round 5 bugs so I had to end the round. I then finished the last two locations of the egg and I went downstairs to not only grab the sword, but also unlock pack punch. Luckily though, the entirety of upgrading the sword went really smooth. No big mess ups, round ends were good, overall things were looking up. The flag step can be really difficult, especially if you haven't played Shadows in a while, which was me. With no fear in headlights to stop all the zombies, it was just me and my rusty skill. I decided to try out the canal district first since it was closest to me, and boy was this close. On the second part, the meatballs were getting a little too close for comfort, especially since the flag can only take what, like 4 hits? Uh, don't quote me on this. Luckily, when I finished the flag here, it was the end of a meatball round, so getting to the next flag was easy. I then tried the hardest location, or at least the most nerve-wracking. Especially since I was listening to music at the time. <laughs> I, okay, my audio is really low, I can barely hear And by sheer luck, I managed to finish this part. And it was here where I realized that this part of the egg was going to be harder than I thought. I managed to make it through the footlight district, although you could tell I was on lock. Great. All I had left was spawn. A really easy thing. I failed it. I had to wait to kill the Marwa before I could start it up again and boy was I shaking in my bahuda hungas to the point where I pulled out my sword. Which didn't even do anything, it went for the meatballs, I was already shooting. I finished the nerve wracking step and made my way down to finish the boss. Now since it was solo, I ended the egg when I sealed the shadow man in the summon key. It was that bad. Oh shit, here comes Pac-Man. Ascension BO3. Did you really think I wouldn't do the Chronicles maps? Again, like before, I still needed the Gershes, Raygun, and Thundergun. However, there's more items in the box, so... <laughs> this version of the egg is not only faster because of the Gobblegums, but because of this neat Lunar Lander glitch. Uh, I don't know if this exists on BO1. This was my reaction to pretty much getting everything I needed really fast. <laughs> Holy shit! All you have to do is when you're about to use the lander, you switch to the controller since the interactions are delayed on the controller. You hold square or X and as you back out of the lander, boom. Not only are you able to run over to the next area, but you reduce the time it takes to call the lander again. Oddly enough, at this point of the egg, it became quite similar to when I was doing the BO1 version. Unfortunately, you don't get to see the rocket blow up this time. At the same time though, the monkeys were stealing my perks, prolonging the round. I get my points to pack, spell out Luna, and free Gersh. 
You know, doing this version of the egg reminded me why I like this map and its easter egg. Yeah, the RNG and monkey rounds suck, but Call of the Dead has George and people still like it. Shangri-La BO3 Since I was using Megas, I had this in the bag. Considering the only RNG factor was the baby gun and maybe the napalm zombie, this was almost guaranteed to be faster than BO1. Like before, I checked the gongs to see which one would be right for the end. Unfortunately, I didn't get any point gums until round 2, but I did get the baby gun <laughs> on the second hit. <laughs> so things were looking up. The first 3 steps went without a hitch. Since I had the baby gun, I didn't need to hit the box and waste time. I finished the steps all on round 3, so I then had at least to get to round 5 to spawn in the shriekers and napalms. Now, I wonder how long it, it took until round 10. That's 7 whole minutes. Thankfully, the other steps went by really fast. Yes, even the radio step. As for the end, I had ephemeral enhancement to pack my baby gun for about a minute, which is perfectly fine. Although, I forgot to hit the gongs. This had me sweating a bit, I'm not gonna lie. I did manage to hit the gongs there, but the pack a punch timer. Oof. Somehow, some way, the pack a punch pressure plate was at spawn after being in the bridge side. And as soon as we get the stone, we can head on to Andre Lambert was born in the harsh lands of Brooklyn, New York. It was there where he grew up faster than his hair, resulting in a bald dome. Going into this, I felt like Saul Goodman looking at his old commercials. I used to speedrun this map and actually had the world record for a while. This was going to be different from the BO1 version, however, as I'm actually doing the full egg this time. I did have to spend a bit longer at Area 51 than I'd like because I got Perkaholic for my first gum. Which is fine, but it's no raindrops. I turn on the power on round 1 because the first excavator spawns in the first 5 rounds of you pulling the power on. So I got Excavator Pie on round 9. I went to Area 51 as soon as the alert got sent out, so I could teleport these hexagons to the moon. While I did get the wave guns, I did not get the QEDs, so I decided to do Samantha says and the hacker step. Don't worry, I didn't forget to finish the hacker step this time. It was the wire I forgot! I started the ball step since I didn't have the QEDs, but when I came back to spawn, I actually got the QEDs, so I could start up the terminal step. After this, the steps went really fast. I dragged the ball to the pyramid, filled it up with souls, Switch souls with Samantha. Now I was just left with the Gersh's. But how long did that take? <laughs> 13 minutes. I packed my gun so I could be safe during the final step. And I finished it alright. In 43 minutes. Origins BO3. We were already more than halfway through my time limit, so things were looking a little bleak for me. I went way over my 30 minute time limit for Moon, and given my past track record, I had the longest egg to finish now. Moon was trifling. How would Origins BO3 play out? The strat is completely different, but the concept is the same. I do about the same thing in the first two minutes or so, except I actually got the Winstaff piece here. I don't do the boxes to get my fist first, I save that for later. First, I grab the staff pieces, and then set my progress for each and every one of the staffs. Because I wanted to save a little time, I did this. That's right. I now hold two staffs at once, so I'm there able to place both the everything. ice staff and wind staff in the crazy place at the same time. In case you're wondering, yes, I did it for the fire and lightning staffs. How did I do this though? Well, Frackleson already sort of did a tutorial, I don't know, I was just kind of stupid and didn't understand it. So I watched iMac. Before I started the run, I watched iMac's world record run on this. And to say I was befuddled, flabbergasted, or even trifled was an understatement to say the least. But there was another part where I was like... <laughs> Turns out, when you pick yourself up with self-med, you have until the revive text disappears to get rid of your second weapon by holding it out once you've picked up your other staff. When I finally learned this, I froze up. Like, ain't no way it was this easy. As soon as I finished the staffs, I did every chest on the map and got my fist. Now when it came to this game's version of the fire staff glitch, I'm not gonna lie, I fumbled! I then had to do the other two robots legit, which was fine because I got the ice staff robot almost immediately, and oh look, it's the lightning robot. I just so happen to have the lightning staff on me right now. What's the worst that could happen? Now, I know it's practically impossible to fail this final step, because look at how much time you have for this.
this it was this this was the other part no i did not get the zombie blood from the panthers no it didn't take me as long as it took me to be origins bo2 it was even longer oh my god that was tom hanks it's tom hanks bro you back down never what never get oh my god <laughs> the giant time check because of how fast this map was, with a whopping 2 minutes, by far the shortest egg aside from Transit Maxis, and both Origins being the longest eggs so far. So, uh, yeah. Hello, Korean. You know, you get to a point when you've ran the map hundreds of times to where it's almost ingrained in your muscle movements. This is how it felt like when I got the round one nuke. Let's go! I did all three dogs pretty smoothly and got round six dogs. Overall, I was kind of worried, but after doing the lightning stuff, I, it was safe to say that I still had it. I take it back, I don't have it! I give souls to the bow and then I teleport and look at the symbols. I input the code. Do the wisp and bring Dempsey down. Overall, this is an ordinary speedrun. Oh my goodness! I ended the round. I don't know why. And not even I knew at the time. Dang. This is when I started to get triggered. So my inner Jev was coming out. Can, Can you get, get the fuck? After teleporting for the second time, I activate the rocket test with the power up to get the final Ragnarok piece. I build and grab the rags right before starting the keeper step. Very bad cycle, by the way. I finished the step and bring him down. I pack a punch to my haymaker and XM in the meantime, and made sure I had raindrops ready for the boss. Now let's get to it. This guy was on a mission to fucking kill me. And he did! Thankfully though, I managed to beat the boss. With all that cringe, I completed their ice and drop. Well, you know what they say. Two dooms at first, but only one remains. The road is long and dark, but I know where we are going. I, we, will complete our mission. Donald Trump, if you can hear us, please, Donald Trump, please save me. Please save me, Donald Trump. It's hard to rank these maps because usually you're not supposed to pick favorites, but... If I had to, Zetsuba would go in F. When I get the purple plant challenge, I don't like it. If I wanted to plant, I'd play Stardew Valley, not COD Zombies. In spite of this egg trying to be a different game, I, I kind of cooked, not gonna lie. The first major thing I did was get the skull of non Sapwe. Sapwe? Sup, your mother. I then used it to get a piece of paper, open a door, and open a cave wall. Uh, uh, don't question it. I then got rainbow water and started planting stuff. Don't worry, I was doing my challenges in between. After getting my bullet plant, which... I was very close to not getting. I did the spider boss and got its fang. I built the shield and the gas mask before getting struck by the- I used the power of electricity and got the blue vial. I then went back to get even more electricity. Because I forgot how not to die in the zipline, I had to ask Papa Clarky. Lightning zipline? Uh, wait for Zip? Yeah, when you're getting that gear. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just melee, right? Yeah, I think it, it's melee. Is it okay. just your melee button? Cause that's that's what I've I've always always pressed your like buttons and shit. A shortcut but, to our destination. No, it's rapid. I shot the plane with the AAT gun. I placed all the gears in the elevator and went on to start the boss. I forgot to upgrade the KT4. Oh my god! For weeks and weeks and where I wasted my goddamn time on this piece of Garad Krovi. Dragon map, here we go. As we turn on the power, our goal is to get the three Groff modules done. As soon as we do, we can ride the dragon to start the progress on the dragon's egg. I first need the dragon to breathe its flames upon the egg to warm it up. Luckily, I got a nuke from this random zombie to end the round. Which is good because I needed to end one full round. I then needed the dragon to breathe again to get napalm fire kills. Once I do, I ride the dragon to start the lockdown sequence and I'm able to get my penetration and shield kills there. I do the lockdown, grab the dragon strike, and start the egg lockdown. When I'm done with that lockdown, I allocate each tube to- I got the tube and put in its code. When I collect the specialist, I'm That's finally shot. able to collect each and every one of this the trophies thing. needed to complete the challenges for the next step. I really liked this step because it was very unique and the execution was really good. It genuinely made the egg challenging. My first challenge was the mangler challenge. You're actually able to shoot off its right arm and it makes the dude run at you instead of slowly crawling to you, making the step way faster than normally. <laughs> the next challenge was the Groff module. 
It's as explanatory as it gets. You just do a large scale graph module and you use the dragon baby to get the sh shush. 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 Next challenge was guiding this robot, Nemo. I called him Nemo due to his little hands, but I had to guide him to the power station. After that is the bump step. Because I'm a pro, I paused and wrote the locations down, completing the bump step easily. What? The last random challenge was the Gersh step for me, and that went by really fast. Not only did I spawn trap him, but I managed to do both quote skips. I failed the second one. F my my life. Life. The last challenge is always the Mangler lockdown. I just played Ring Around the Rosie with him and killed him once the bar went down. I brought the thing to Sophie and gave Nikolai the power core. Luckily I did the quote skip here, so that saved quite a bit of time. Now all that was left was the boss fight. Many a people have died here. <laughs> Why? No. 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 Oh, why? Why did that happen? But not me. Nuh uh. I'm a big boy. No. Uh oh. Final bit, guys. Alright, final fucking bit. That was it. How am I meant to d defend against that? How am I meant to defend against that? Huh? Oh my god. Enemy, <laughs> uh, that should not have happened. <laughs> now we move on to the last map. But God said if I eat it, I'll die. <laughs> Revelations. This map requires a lot, and I mean a lot of RNG. And I was on 9 hours and 33 minutes. The time was not on my side, and it was running short. Just to name a few things required to beat the egg in a good time, you need the little arnies, the apothecon, the thunder gun, good gum cycle, good egg spawns, good egg symbols, good bot. There's a lot. I start off with hitting the box just to, you know, hopefully get something cool. And I got the tundra gun from Tagder Toen. Okay, not actually, it's just a skin from the mod. My goal was to start the keeper to do its little ritual as soon as possible. So I'd go through all the islands to do that, but this guy just had to troll me for a bit. If you leave the island the keeper is on, zombies won't get to the keeper for some reason. I don't know why, but it works. That way I'm able to do everything else needed like activating the generators and hitting the box for ironies and the top. After placing the reel from the keeper's ritual, I luckily got raindrops from cycling through the gums earlier. I threw the ironies into every hole I could find and looked what happened when I end the round. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I then place the reel at Kino's backstage and go around the map shooting the bones. Check these cool things out. I shot the bones and the body with the cold blue apothecon gun and collected the reel. When I placed the third and final reel, I managed to get shopping free, allowing me to activate each and every turret generator that coincidentally cost 2k points each. I don't know, it's weird. And so, I teleported to the house for the cranorium. I placed the book down, and now I start to collect eggs. I placed the eggs in a weird incubation thing for souls, and placed the worms down for a symbol. Treyarch! Now, I was stupid here and forgot where to get the symbol, so I wasted a lot of time here. I did this four times and that allowed me to enter the first boss fight. Because it's been so long since I've done this egg, I kind of forgot I had to interact with the book to actually spawn the symbols in. The whole boss fight went smoothly due to the thunder gun being an absolute beast. But, but then I had, had a very good idea. idea. I, I used, used F5. F5. See, using F5, F5 gave me a whole, me a whole new perspective, perspective and I was, I was able, able to see a I threw the summoning key at each memory location. And then I was able to finally enter the final boss fight. Oh my god.
Bro. I almost didn't get that. That would have been awful. I did it. He did it. I did it. He did it. You did it, cringe man. I did it. I did it. This challenge is mine. Through this journey, we managed to conclude that while it takes a lot, it is very possible to do every easter egg in under 12 hours. Now, I couldn't do this with my friends because they're stinky, boo, but I actually managed to do it. While it was always theoretically possible to do this, Sozin's Comet had to pretty much align to make this possible. Now, since I'm a watch speedrunner, I had little to no confidence in my abilities before starting this. I knew if I failed any of these attempts, it could have been game over for me and I had to restart all the way back to Darius World at War. So anxiety loomed over especially after Barry Richthofen and getting that 1 in 24. After this though, it reminded me how much I enjoyed speedrunning, in spite of all its RNG resets. Somehow this ended up being 41 pages long. This took a long time making this entire video myself, editing, voicing, finding the right memes, and actually making sure the jokes were funny. So I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It'd mean a lot more than you think. I'm not even monetized, so I can't make money off of any of the videos on this channel. So yeah, see ya. There we have it. Final time. Sophia. Wait, 10, 10, 41. You know what we must do, my dear.